Hello, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining this evening's neighborhood meeting for Brown Shoot Park. Um, we're going to go ahead and wait a few moments for more people to join, and then we'll go ahead and get started at 6.05. Thank you. Hi everyone, 
It is 6.05, so we'll go ahead and get started. My name is Eileen Lee, and thank you so much for coming in to join this virtual neighborhood meeting for Brown Street de Calera's Park. So on this evening's agenda, we'll go ahead and get started with introductions, followed by purpose of the neighborhood meeting, leading into the background and project information. Then we'll go into next steps and conclude with questions or comments. Again, my name is Eileen Lee. I am the project planner for Brown Street Park, and I am assistant planner. Also here is Albert Enal, senior planner, Vermont. Paymon Bavond, our planning manager, and Aaron Morris, director of community development. Also here are our colleagues from Public Works, Sharon Chan, assistant engineer from CIP and Parks and Recreation, Nemo Gonzalez, senior parks planner, and Elizabeth Crisante, recreation manager. I do want to note tonight that we also have council member Silva, council members Chapman, and commissioner Beaumont who are here to observe this meeting. So the purpose of this neighborhood meeting is to provide an opportunity for dialogue with our community about this project, seek information from the community and answer any questions you may have and identify next steps in this process. To provide some background, this project requires a mining design review request um, to construct a park on a vacant 3.48 acre site. And this project site is located off of Brown Street to the east and north of East Monte Vista Avenue. To the right is the location map, which highlights the project site in red. And it is right above the Solano County Health and Social Services building. For this project, the site plan is broken up into two different phases. Phase one, which includes a 25 square foot recreation center, a 600 square foot outdoor stage, a multi-purpose sports court, as well as 22 parking spaces. And later on in phase two, we have a 10,000 square foot housing and community services building, as well as additional parking spaces with 26 more. Here on the screen is an overall site plan of Brown Street Park. To the left is phase one, which shows the informal play field area and the multi-purpose sports court, as well as to the south, the future stage with some lawn seating in the recreational center. And phase two is shown to the right of the screen, highlighted in a light yellow, which includes additional parking for the park and the future housing and community services building. So next steps on this project is we are continuing to collect public feedback on this project. Please feel free to email us with any questions or comments that you may have. And recently we have just published an environmental document um, for this project, which discloses any potential impacts from the environment to this project. Um, and on September 4th, we sent out um, the NOI, the notice of intent for this environmental document. And this period closes in 30 days. So on October 4th at 5.30 p.m., our comment period closes. This concludes our presentation for Brown Street Park. Um, next up, we are going to have any questions or comments um, for us to answer to. So please go ahead and raise your hand and we'll call on you one at a time. Thank you. Okay, um, currently I do not see, oh, thank you. Um, we have Geraldo um, De La Torre, go ahead um, and I'll unmute you. Go ahead, thank you. Hi, good evening everyone. Good evening board. Thank you for the comment opportunity. Um, I guess one of the first questions I had was um, because this isn't a, a part of the normal agenda in minutes, I did not see it on the city of Acaville government website. So aside from the mail-in notice of intent, there's not really much of a digital footprint 
is this recording along with any future publications that aren't part of the normal meeting going to be available to the public? Thank you for your um, comment and question. I do want to um, state that this meeting has been recorded um, for you to view. We will upload this on our city's website um, once we adjourn this meeting later this week. Um, so people from the public are able to watch this recorded meeting. Thank you. And since I don't see any other notices up, can I ask another question? Oh, I'm sorry. Give it to Marissa. Thank you. Hi, Marissa, go ahead and unmute. Hi, good afternoon. Do you mind going back to the um, previous slides so we can look at the layout? Yeah, of course. And then I was just curious, do you have a sense, I, I recognize that, you know, there's different bidding requirements and timeframes overall, but do you have a sense on the construction schedule as far as the anticipated construction commencing and being completed for both phases? Yeah, thank you so much for your question, Marissa. Um, I'm going to ha uh, go ahead and defer to our colleague, Sharon Chan, um, about that question on the construction timing and phasing for this one. Hi, Marissa, this is Sharon um, from Public Works. And yes, um, we are expecting construction to begin um, mid-2026 and be completed by the end of 2027. Is that for both phases or for just phase one? That's just for phase one. Um, phase two, we do not have a timeline for that at this time. And are both of these phases um, currently funded, fully funded? No, just phase one. Got it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your question. Um, do we have any other hands at the moment? I know, Geraldo, you had um, an additional question. Uh, yes, thank you. In in review of the latest release diagrams and uh, blueprints for the park, there was a building titled uh, Future Housing and Community Services. I just wanted to confirm if that's only going to be offering government services or if that's also going to be including some sort of on-site housing. Thank you for your question. Um, for this one, phase two um, highlighted on the screen um, for the future housing and community services building, this will include um, the new department building for our city uh, of Vacaville housing and services staff. So um, this will not include any housing for um, folks, just more so a department building for our housing and community services staff. Gotcha, thank you. Okay, um, I do see a hand raised by DL. Go ahead and um, unmute your, your screen or your. Yeah, hello. Um, so I was looking at the project summary and there were 35 parking spaces. And then in the presentation you just gave, there's 48. So um, which is the appropriate number of parking spaces? Thank you for your question. Uh, yes, originally in our project, it did identify um, a few less parking stalls, but in um, taking a look at the project, there have been some minor changes to um, include additional parking spaces. So the number 48 provided in this presentation is the um, number that is going to be installed for parking. And one hello, everybody. My name is Albert Eno. I'm a senior planner. I just wanted to shine some light on the whole parking question. Um, there is a phase one parking portion, and then there's a phase two. So when we're talking about parking, the phase one component appears to be it will be uh, 22 spaces that would be built with this neighborhood park. And then there's another additional 26 that would be built with that yellow portion called phase two. Um, so we just wanted to make that distinction. Okay, um, I see a hand raised from Geraldo. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, just in regards to the area in which this project is being this considered, I know that there is an occasional uh, vagrant and transient populations that kind of fluctuate on the corner of Brown Street and East Monta Vista. 
Uh, and I was just curious if there was kind of any impact report or any kind of information or any kind of uh, uh, information gathering with our local police department. Uh, they do a great job in terms of maintaining uh, the area, but again, it's something where it const it fluctuates. So sometimes it becomes noticeable and pro potentially problematic, and other times it's just another quiet Thursday. Yeah, um, thank you so much for that question. Um, for this one, we're going to defer to um, Sharon to kind of discuss um, about the communications with police um, in terms of planning this project. Yes, yeah, so we have been in contact with police and police is aware. Um, we will continue to work with police to ensure that um, enforcement is done. Um, for this project and uh, with any type of issues. Um, we have walked through the design with them as well so that um, we have measures in there that make it unattractive for people to hang out or hide or um, you know occupy the site for any reason other than the intended purpose. Can you elaborate on the measures that you're taking in the park for that? Yes, yeah, so um, for example, for the shelters, the, I'm um, sorry, the shaded um, picnic shelters that we have um, proposed, we will have installed lighting in there so that it's not dark, it's well lit. Um, we have a trash enclosure where we are making sure it's locked. There's not a gap for um, people to be able to climb in and um, kind of just, um, um, occupy that enclosure. Um, um, we have lighting throughout the park. Um, we've made it so that it's very visible for the for cops to be able to drive by to look into the park both from Brown Street as well as from the driveway aisle um, that's on the west or east side of the park. Um, so yeah, those are some of the measures that we have um, built into this park. Does that answer your question? Yeah, that's great. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I do see a hand raised by Marissa. Um, go ahead. There's a really great list of amenities for the phase one um, portion of the project. I'm just curious, was this, there a larger um, effort regarding the community in, in requesting certain amenities, like for example, the um, Central Plaza gathering area and the recreation center with the commercial teaching kitchen specifically. I'm just kind of curious on how some of those amenities were determined. Thank you for your question, Marissa. Um, for this one, I do want to defer to our Parks and Rec um, colleagues over here, Nemo Gonzalez, as well as Sharon, um, our colleague in Public Works, on some background on how this configuration and amenities were planned out. Hi, this is uh, Nemo, I'm a senior uh, park planner with the city of Vacaville. Um, I actually see that Tamara is on the line and I don't mean to put her on the spot, but um, a portion of this is being funded by grant funds and some of it was required by a grant. She might have more insight on how the list of amenities came about because some of it is a grant requirement and then other portions of the amenities that are being provided were determined through outreach efforts in the past. Hi, Nima. Thank you. Yes, um, this is Tamara Colton, the Housing and Community Services Director. So that's exactly correct. Um, the city in 2020 applied for a state parks grant. Um, that's what's funding a portion of this project. And during that time, a requirement of the application was to hold community outreach meetings to get feedback um, regarding the amenities that were desired in the park. And so there were um, community outreach meetings held at that time um, as part of preparing the application for that for that grant fund. So that's how some of those amenities were determined by the community outreach conducted at that time. Thank you. One last follow-up question on that is, um, in terms of restroom facilities, I imagine there might be one that would be available during office hours for the recreation center, but 
considering that this is also meant to be a, a plaza and gathering space, are there going to be any type of temporary um, restroom facilities or any type of supplemental? Thank you for that question, Marissa. Um, in terms of the recreation center, it will be open for the um, hours of operations and where their restroom use can be used by the public. Um, I do want to check in with Sharon, our colleague Sharon, on whether or not there will be any additional restrooms um, for this park. Thank you. And just to clarify, the restroom in the rec center is only available during um, when the when the Recreation Center is staffed and has um, programs that are programmed into it. So it's not, even though the hours of it, of the Recreation Center is between, I believe, eight, eight and five, it's only, the Recreation Center would only be open when there are scheduled activities. Um, in terms of bathrooms, um, Nemo, um, did you want to address that regarding neighborhood parks? Yeah, so uh, this is Nemo again. For this particular uh, site, we, as both Sharon and Eileen have indicated, we have a restroom that's available to the public at the recreation center during hours of operation. And then we don't have any other uh, plans for additional restrooms that would be operable outside of those typical hours. That's actually standard protocol for any neighborhood park, which this park will be classified a neighborhood park. We typically reserve those type of amenities um, for larger parks like community parks where we anticipate that people are gonna be driving from much further away from town. This is uh, intended to serve uh, the local population in and around uh, this particular neighborhood. Great, thank you for clarifying. I do see a hand from Commissioner Beaumont, and go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Um, I currently do not see any hands raised. I just want to check in if any um, one from the public has any more questions or comments for this Brown Street Park. Oh, wait. Hi, Marissa. I do see your hand raised. Um, go ahead. What is the overall cost for the project broken out in phases? Thank you for your question, Marissa. Um, I know there are a few grants that were received by the city for this project. So um, I do want to check in with our director of housing and community services um, to discuss a little bit more about the cost and funding of this park. Hi, thanks, Eileen. Yeah, so the overall cost of the park is about $18.1 million. $6.7 million of that was received from the state through the state parks grant that was awarded. There's additional funding um, coming from the city's community development block grant program that has been allocated towards the park. That's estimated at an additional about $300. Uh, $1,000 over the next couple years, as well as the city intends to apply for um, what's called a Section 108 loan. Um, um, that is funding in the amount of five times of the city's annual um, community development block grant allocation towards a large project such as this. And so the city is estimating an additional 2.5 million approximately towards the project from that funding. And then the city approved um, additional funding from its measure M funding to close um, the gap between all of those grant sources and the total cost of the project. Hopefully that answers your question. Yeah, and so that's just for phase one, because I think earlier on I heard that phase two wasn't fully funded. 
That's correct. That's the cost of phase one of the project. 18 million. Correct. Okay, thank you so much. I appreciate you clarifying that. Thank you. I do see a hand raised by iPhone guest too. Um, go ahead and unmute yourself for any questions or comments. Thank you. Okay, um, I do just want to double check um, with one of our um, attendees with their hand raised um, to see if they have any comments. All righty, um, I do want to check in. Does anyone have any other questions or comments? I oh, thank you. Um, go ahead and unmute yourself, Gerardo. Thank you. Uh, in regards to reading the previous meeting's minutes, uh, in regards to pathways, it just specifies that there's walking and a jogging trail, uh, but there's no mention of any potential, and I didn't, uh, it, there's no mention of any uh, receptacles or any kind of, um, I don't know what else to call them, but the poles for, uh, for when people take their pets out to clean up after them. Uh, and I didn't see anything in the document, uh, in the blueprints. Will there be any kind of uh, facilitation for people to be like pooping, uh, pooper scoopers or the little receptacles to the, specifically throw that stuff away? Or is that going to be just on the onus of the owner when they arrive to the park? Thank you for your question. Um, I do want to check in with our colleague Sharon um, to discuss a little bit more about those types of amenities for um, residents with pets. Hi, yes, so there is an intent to install, um, uh, I don't remember exactly what they're called, but like little doggy waste stations. Um, so there are, they're just not showing on plan. This is a very general plan. When we get into design, it will actually show those locations. Um, Nemo, did you have anything else to add? Nope, nothing to add. This is uh, this particular graphic, so it's called an illustrative master plan. And so we don't get into those details because the scale of it doesn't allow for it. It's more intended to be uh, something that's accessible to the general public. But we typically at all of these uh, brand new sites will have normal trash receptacles that you see at every other park. And we will have uh, a couple of dog stations as well. And by that, I mean uh, dog waste stations. Thank you. And if I can just follow up to Nemo's comment, does that mean if we're interested in seeing what kind of amenities they'll have for the general public if we were to visit another park it'll be standardized so it'll be similar and if if we still have like questions about what it may look like yeah so what it's going to look like is generally what you see here uh in terms of amenities uh when we're talking about like materials and all of that that's some of it is to be determined um as we get into construction documents but if you're interested in what typically is found at a neighborhood park, uh, I recommend that you go into the city website uh, under departments, parks and rec. And we have a park and rec master plan that was uh, adopted by city council in 2021, I believe. And in one of the chapters close to the end, five or six, there's a list of amenities that are typically found at all of the different classifications of parks. So there you'll see um that restrooms are typically in community parks this one happens to be a neighborhood park and it'll cover most of the the normal amenities but again uh -huh. i don't know that it'll list um dog waste stations because that is typically um so to, it, the cost of it is negligible so it's not anything that we typically uh we don't get into that level of detail in the amenities but it lists most other things um, even seating and shade and picnic tables. Well, if I can just uh, close this question up with a follow-up uh, to compare then, since we have over 30 parks, is there yeah. any park in within Vacaville that you could recommend in terms of being similar to the scope of this planning? Absolutely. Um, and just, you know, uh, just for 
everyone's edification. The way that parks in general come about is all kinds of different ways. Oftentimes they are um, developed by uh, developers who are building homes and sometimes they're built by the city uh, because the funding uh, uh, mechanisms are varied. Sometimes they're well amenitized and sometimes they're phased in. Um, and so you're not going to find sort of an apples to apples. The other thing is the Park and Rec Master Plan was adopted in 2021, and most of the parks in the city were built before that. Um, and so what I, when I point out the Park and Rec Master Plan, uh, when I point out that sort of the list of amenities that are, are in the, the guiding document for Parks and Rec, um, that's moving forward, all of the new parks will have those typical amenities. And so if I were to recommend a, a typical park that'll that'll uh, resemble this, it's likely going to be one of the newer parks in town. Um, in terms of amenities, I'm thinking uh, Magnolia Park. I'm thinking uh, Corderos Park, um, uh, possibly Nash Mesto Park. Um, those are the newer parks in town. Thank you for all your specificity and transparency. Yeah, of course. Thank you. And I do see hand raised by iPhone guests. Um, go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Brandy Eason and I'm here with Carla Molina. We are members of the Markham Neighborhood Association that lives in this area off Brown Street. And we are very excited for this project. Um, us as a public, do we need to do anything or what can we do to help get this project going? If anything. Yeah, thank you so much for your um, question about what you can do um, to get this project going. Currently, where we're at is um, the design review process with the planning entitlements. So um, if you'd like, you can go ahead and email us or any questions or comments that you have, whether it's support or any um, comments you just wanted to provide. In terms of project um, approval, we are looking to um, go towards this process and receive comments on the environmental document. Um, however, um, this project is um, staff level, so we're looking to collect comments and make our way um, towards um, the approval of this project. Awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, um, I do see a hand raised by Marion. Um, please feel free to go ahead and unmute yourself. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just a bit confused. I have followed this project as a member of the Markham Neighborhood Association through the city council meetings. And it was my understanding that the 18 million figure was for the entire project, not just for the first phase, but you guys just said it was only for the first phase. Thank you for that question, Marion. Um, I just wanted to check in with our colleague, Sharon, to speak a little bit more about the funding for each phase. Um, yeah, I think, Tamara, did you wanna speak on this question? Okay, so um, I, I know that the 18 million we went to council with was for the entire project, meaning including design and not just construction. So that's my understanding of how, um, of that $18 million. Um, phase two um, project actually um, very early on in the planning phase was removed. So we didn't really do much work um, on that, except the only thing that we did do was the environmental document. Um, so we would be ready to, um, go into design and and um, when the time comes, but I'm still hoping that Tamara is on um, to answer the maybe provide a little more detail. Okay, but um, Marion, do you mind if we get your um, a phone number or contact information? Then we can definitely reach out, reach back out to you for some additional clarification. Sure. Okay, perfect. Um, Eileen, how can we go do, how can we do that? 
Oh. Yeah, thank you so much, Marion. Um, for this one, uh, would you be able to send over an email to the email shown on the screen above? And then we'll definitely check in with our Director of um, Housing Community Services to provide a follow-up for you on um, your question about that $18 million and the project funding. Okay, yeah, I can do that. I just, I, I, I'm a little confused. Like I said, I was there. I, I spoke at the meetings, city council meetings, but because this project has been a long time coming. I don't know if other people on the call are aware of this, but we've been promised a park in this area for 20 years or better. And, you know, it, it's finally getting there and it's more expensive than it would have been 20 years ago, but that's the cost of things, you know. Anyway, thanks. I will send an email. Thank you. I do see we have a hand raised by um, iPhone guests. Um, feel free to um, provide your questions or comments. And that's me, right? Sorry. Oh, yep. Go ahead. Thank uh, you. Well, I'm very sorry about that. Um, I think this is a great idea. I think it's a great plan. I think we really need this in the neighborhood for our families. Um, my only concern is the the um, oh, um, I'm not sure if we can hear you anymore. Would you be able Sorry to? Sorry about that. I'm I'm just um. I don't know where I got cut off, but mostly I'm 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 concerned with the unhoused community in the city of Vacaville. Um, do we have any plans in effect to kind of keep this a nice family friendly place? Thank you so much for your question. I do want to um, inform you that, um, as mentioned previously by Sharon, um, our colleague here, we have worked with um, our police department on this planning process of this project um, and incorporate different mechanisms to help with um, any types of activity here, including lighting, um, ensuring that the trash enclosure is right on the property line to provide um, less areas for spaces where it's unseen. In addition, phase two will be fenced off to ensure that area is enclosed um, for the future phase. Um, and so we have chatted and discussed with our police department team on preparation for this project to be constructed. Wonderful. I'm sorry if I missed that before. I was a little late to the meeting. And I apologize if I wasted some people's time, but thank you for going over that again. Oh, no worries at all. Thank you so much for that question. Um, does anyone have any um, questions they'd like to raise their hand for or any comments? Okay, um, I see we have Gerardo. Thank you. To dovetail off the previous comment, um, in regards to funding, if phase two doesn't happen to be funded, is there either a contingency plan or a secondary objective to obtain funding or would the park just remain in phase one if construction is completed after phase one? Hi, thank you for your question. Um, for this one, um, Sharon, could you uh, tell us a little bit more about um, the plan for this one if phase two is unable to proceed? I will try. Um, so I believe that um, my understanding is that phase, if phase two doesn't go happen and it doesn't get funded, then it will stay as is. Um, I have not heard anything different and um, there may be plans in the future, but as of now, that's my understanding of the, what phase two is, what's going to happen to phase two if it does not get funding. Okay, thank you. Um, All righty, I do see a hand raised by DL Guest. Um, go ahead, thank you. Yeah, I just, I just wanted to, again, kind of dovetail off of that uh, question. So, 
if phase two isn't built out, are there enough parking spaces in phase one to support phase one? Yeah, that's a really good question about parking. Um, Nemo, I know typically for a neighborhood, parks are different parking requirements. Do you think you can go a little bit into detail about um, parking for neighborhood parks? I can do my best. Um, so there typically isn't a, uh, unlike, unlike buildings, there isn't a number associated for open space that is accessible to the public for uh, neighborhood parks specifically, because again, they're intended to serve folks that live within a half a mile radius, which is approximately a 10 minute walk. And so oftentimes, and I'm not saying that there isn't exceptions, uh, Meadowlands and, and Magnolia uh, are exceptions to this particular rule, but oftentimes our neighborhood parks will not have any park parking lot associated with them. Um, this one in particular happens to have a, a building in the recreation center. Um, and so uh, Eileen could probably sort of uh, provide insight into the requirements for that particular structure. But uh, uh, I believe that the parking that's being provided in phase one is sufficient to cover, I think it goes above and beyond the requirement for the building. Um, and which means that it's also providing some additional parking for, uh, for the park as well. Uh, but but the intent of a neighborhood park typically is to serve people that can easily walk to the park. And so that's the intent. Okay, I do see a question from Dorado. Um, go ahead and provide your comment or question. Thank you. And I guess just to follow up from the parking question, are we to assume, just like all the other parks in Vacaville, that there won't be any kind of a fee pay structure installed for the for the on street parking side, or any, or I mean, do, would any any uh, potential uh, attendant of the park have to worry about any kind of uh, payment for parking or anything? No, we uh, we don't intend to charge for the parking at this particular facility. Uh, I think that's our standard protocol for uh, most of the facilities that we operate. Thank you. I do see a hand raised by iPhone guest. Um, feel free to unmute yourself. Thank you. Hi. Um, sorry. Sorry to interrupt. Um, continuing on the parking. Um, I know in the state of California and the city of Vacaville, it's um, difficult for the police department to do anything about cars that are just set out or left abandoned is there going to be some kind of overnight parking rule that would allow for to keep people from storing vehicles there as you know in this area of town there's a lot of people that have unregistered vehicles and every time they get a warning they just move them um and that, that includes street parking as well but I'm just a little bit worried about that Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, so I want to let you know that um, for this one, we want to be able to kind of follow up and get back to you on this one. Um, and so would you be able to provide your question over email and then we can follow up on um, ways that we can chat with police and provide a follow up and response to you on how we're going to um, oversee and, and review um, those scenarios. Absolutely, and that would be to Eileen, correct? Yep, that's correct. Um, right on the screen, it's going to be Eileen.Lee at cityofbackville.com. Oh, yes, ma'am. I've got that um, already written down, and I'd be happy to follow up on that. Thank you very much for your answer. Thank you. Okay, um, I do want to check in to see if there um, are any other questions. Currently, I don't see any hand raised. Um, I'll wait ahead um, for a few moments to see. Okay, um, I do see a question from Dorado. Thank you. 
Will there be any other information settings like this uh, in terms of keeping the public continually informed on the latest progress or will any future uh, meetings just be within the parks and recreations uh, committee? Yeah, thank you for that question. So um, in terms of this neighborhood meeting, this will be um, the meeting with planning, uh, but in terms of Brown Street Park, there will be an additional meeting with Parks and Rec. Um, I do want to check in with um, Parks and Rec to see if there are any meetings for um, Brown Street Park, but this will be our only neighborhood meeting. Sir, I can elaborate a little bit. Uh... And Sharon can confirm, but we have our standard uh, Park and Rec Commission meetings the first Wednesday of every month. There's usually a couple of months uh, where we take holiday breaks, one in December, one in the middle of the year. This particular month, we also we also take a break because we did not have a lot on the agenda. But my understanding is that Sharon, uh, who is managing the project for Public Works, um, we'll be bringing this to our Park and Rec Commission the first uh, Wednesday of October. Sharon, can you confirm that? That is correct. So there will at least be one additional meeting, and those meetings are obviously open to the public. You're welcome to come and chime in. And then just to confirm, the Wednesday meeting from this month on the 4th was the only one that was canceled, but otherwise it's the first Wednesday of every month? That's correct. Yep. And then this isn't a question. This was just more of an information thing, but I did just want to bring it to your attention on the main uh, Brown Street Neighborhood Public Park Improvements page. Uh, just for transparency sake, when uh, you try to click on the agenda and meetings minutes, it just leads to a broken link. And I have submitted a trouble ticket to whoever is your webmaster, but I just wanted to bring it to your attention. I know that I can access it also just from the general city of Vacaville government website, but just since uh, someone just types in Brown Street Park, that's the first thing that comes up on Google. I would hope that no one just stops looking for those agendas and minutes after they define the dead link. So. Okay. Thank you so much for providing that information. We'll go ahead and check in with our city staff on how we can fix that. Um, in addition, we'll go ahead and upload this meeting to the agenda in minutes once that link is resolved and um, up to date where it's clickable. So thank you for that information for letting us know. Okay, um, I do wanna check in to see if there are any other questions or comments before we um, close this presentation and neighborhood meeting. So I'll go ahead and wait a moment, um, but if not, we'll close the meeting. Hi, I had a question if possible. Um, I wanted to know if this meeting, uh, you might've said it and I might've missed it, if it, the recording is going to be available on the website. I'm familiar with the website for the council meetings. Is it gonna be posted alongside that? Thank you for your question. Um, so for this one, we have recorded this neighborhood meeting and we're gonna go ahead and post it on our city's website. Um, if you'd like, you can go ahead and email um, that question over to me and I can send you that direct link on where you can find that recorded um, footage of this neighborhood meeting. Um, I just want to check in um, to see if there are any last or remaining comments or questions for the Brown Street Park project. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining this meeting and to um, for you to provide your comments and questions to us as city staff. Um, we greatly appreciate it. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening. So thank you. Thank you to everyone in attendance and to the council members for your hard work.